of Real Talk with uh, Carl and Charlene. You see me laughing here because we just getting it in right before the show. This is exactly what we do. I was going to invite my new co-host along with the co-host, my co-host Shadow. But he's so much chilling. <laughs> So we're like, chilling in the background today. Yeah. He will probably make an appearance because he's always, and we're talking about her cat. Stop talking. Stop he always, talking. Stop he always talking. makes an appearance. So there's, there's some noise in the background. He let me know that he's watching the show. Hey, Charlene, what's going on? We got exciting uh, information going on today. We probably, maybe we'll see how things work out. We may have a special guest for you guys as well, but we're bringing you another edition and we're talking about something today. First of all, I just want to thank everybody who's going to stop by and uh, drop in from where you're tuning in from. Let us know where you're tuning in from. We do want to hear from you as well. Also drop in topics. If you want us to cover shows, we got shows now on Tuesday and Thursday, and we're just doing it. We're just doing it. I'm not going to say doing it big because we don't have a big ass. We're just doing it for our communities, doing it for networking, doing it for leveling up in business and in life. And we're just sharing tips and we're going to have guests on continuously to give us tips as well. We got a busy week this week. Looking forward to our show on Thursday. Also, where we're going to be having someone on this drop in the gym. So we're going to tell you who that is later on this evening, this afternoon, after we get done with the show. But right now, I'm going to turn it over to my co-host. What's up, Charlene? What's going on What's on this going Tuesday? On? Uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a crazy couple of weeks. Um, as you know, I've been getting my podcast together, so it launched. Dropped another episode this morning uh, based off a conversation um, that I had with one of my coaches. She was like, you know, this would be a good topic. And I was like, all right, let's try it out. Um, so it was all about, you know, is your brand and why is your brand not bringing in bank? Why is it not helping you really sustain yourself? Um, hello, everybody. I see y'all dropping in. I see y'all well, dropping Paige, in. Appreciate you guys. Mm -hmm. And it was a great conversation on Clubhouse. I made that, uh, um, I already made it uh, an episode on the podcast. So I released it today because it was ahead of time. It wasn't even supposed to be the next one. But I was like, you know what? Bump that. People like this topic. Let's put it up. Let's put um, it up yeah. So I think we should get into that another time. Um, but, you know, just about, you know, making sure that whatever you're doing in your business, you are clear, you're concise. And you are consistent. Yes, absolutely. Um, we're talking about today, and it's something that I think all of us as entrepreneurs, all of us as business people, all of us as just people in general, we're not even going to put it to the functionality of an entrepreneur, but just people in general, even in your life and even in your business now that we're talking about both of those subjects. Our topic, are you trusting the wrong people? Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think we may be able to cover that more so in business because we're on this business platform and we're sharing that. But this is also coming in in essence of your personal as well. Are you having the right ones around you? I know it's a thing. I've talked to a few people uh, that talk about those five people that influence you. That five people in that circle. And uh, a majority of us, if you just ask us real quickly, we're going to include mom. We're going to include maybe a sibling. You know what I mean? We're going to include those in the circle, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and the essence is that, and believe me, I'm not trying to talk against that, but sometimes are they the ones that are really giving it to you real to push you where you need to go? Are you in those circles where his mom, you know, she's patting you, you know, giving you that confidence still as a parent saying, oh, you could do it. Or is she really like telling you, yo, that's trash. You need to go back, revisit that. Sometimes I think if we have these kind of people in our circle. We can elevate ourselves. What do you think about that, Charlie? I think it's it's a mix because, you know, we, we get so tied and connected to our friends, our families and their opinions. But then we have to realize they're most likely may not be business people. If you are a first generation business owner, um, you, you're moving into the status of you becoming a millionaire, you're getting money, but you're not getting money because you just want to spend it and do frivolous things. You're actually reinvesting in yourself, in your business, in your family, but you have things that you really need to take care of. So you need people around you who understand how things are changing around you, who understand how to really build with you and help you build. So I've, I've been learning hard, hard lessons <laughs> that uh, stop asking folks to help, especially if you realize they give you a bunch of lip service. 
Um, they're not taking action. You need to be around action takers who understand how to get a business on and popping. And if they don't know, they're connected to others who know what you need so they can help you grow. And that's something that um, I've, I've been learning a lot lately, especially uh, with Deanna's help, Deanna Jean, she's all about intentional networking and bringing people into your circle for purposes that not only you can benefit from, but others in the community can benefit from. So just knowing, like if you have doctors in your in your community, who what kind of doctors are they? Maybe somebody one day needs a, a OBGYN. Maybe someone needs um, someone for... Um, for cancer and things like that. You need to understand who's in your network, where are their strengths, and how can they support everyone else around you? Almost like, it, you know, that saying, it takes a village. So if that's the case, then we need to know who in the village does what, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, that is definitely the key to success because everyone has their own strengths. And a lot of times when you're hanging around these people, I even delve a little bit deeper um, in the essence of my uh, network and when you look at the people that you're involved in and I know even when you're starting a network and I'm starting to notice it as I'm looking at trends and as I'm studying different things and trying to see what works what performance uh, is effective what things to put out are effective what people are really gaining what's really gaining traction with people I look a lot of times that even in our networking we tend to carry on those same habits in that networking we tend to kind of smooth toward those that are kind of like generating the same thing. And I think that in the essence of me talking to clients and training people and retraining the mindset that mm -hmm. you have to, I think it's very, very popular. Uh, well, most people may agree with it. They, most, they may say it, but not actually do it. I think mm -hmm. it's very popular to start being involved in a network with people that are totally opposite. From you. Yeah. Totally opposite. I mean, nothing in common because it's easy to gravitate to a commonality, right? You mm -hmm. have something that's in common with me. I, we have a conversation. I've always dared myself to have a conversation with someone who I have nothing in common with. And I think that's always been educational to them. What I'm finding out, even in the networks that people are networking with, they tend to go around and continue on their networking past the past where they are to those same, they gravitate to those same maybe 10, 20 people in their network. And these are people with high numbers in their network as followers and engagers or people that engage with you. We're missing so many opportunities when we're going with this familiarity. I think if we come out of that, then we'll learn how to trust, who to trust, where to trust, because our feelings will come out of play and the things that we need to carry us forward will come into play. Then you can start putting those antlers out. But yeah, I kind of trust what they're saying. But when we're steady standing in the same loophole in the same circle, we're going to still feel those same things. And it's not going to be able to be something that engages us to move forward and propel a lot of the whole, if you can say that, that we're in. And especially if you, it's, I guess it's your um, real world algorithms where yeah. you're so into this rut, you don't realize it because you're in the same space. You're talking to the same people, you're doing the same things. And it becomes not just redundant, but it's actually not allowing you to grow. So if you're not expanding who you're hanging around with, who are you talking to? If you're not expanding that, then you start to miss out on other opportunities that may be around you. Um, and it's, it's, also, it's also telling where if you have a network where there are people in it and they have connections, but they're not introducing you, then what is the disconnect? How, why are they not trying to broaden your, your space? Or are you not asking enough? Are you not um, being clear and saying, hey, let's do something. But then where do you, where does that, um, I guess for you, where, where would we really step in and say, we shouldn't have to keep begging people um, to do stuff or help us. Where do we really jump in and say, okay, now I got to do my own shift. Maybe I just got to break away from, from this group of people and do something different. Yeah, I think it, it, it jumps in for me. This is basically, and I think this is something that, that all, all people occur even when I'm talking about the vulnerability and how that plays in a part that plays a very integral part into your personality and what you draw and when you use vulnerability as your strength you can now weed out the things that you're constantly going in a circle about I call it the hamster effect when you end that circle and you're just the hamster is rotating continuously on the wheel because it's familiar 
But once the hamster comes out of that wheel and is let out into a box of freedom, they really don't go that far. And that's because their mindset is always in that rotation of rotation of circle. So we be fall into that the same way. We start getting ideas. We start formulating ideas. We start tapping into ones who we think we can help. And a lot of times they're not understanding it because a lot, and I know I'm following to this myself, I'm telling you from experience. <laughs> There's not an articulation in what you want to do versus what's in your mind. A lot of times we have things in our mind that uh, I have a whole city up here, but I don't even have a builder on the outside that even know how to formulate my bricks. So these are the things that we have to get out of our mind. And vulnerability tells us that because we stay away from those things, thinking that people can't hurt. But when you open yourself up Mm -hmm. and understand who can, who can't, regardless of whatever, you know, what's going to happen relationship wise, then we can start to trust people because you understand once you open up and you start letting people into certain areas of what you want to do, you'd be surprised who would pick that up and say, yo, you know, I wanted to do that too, just to know how. Let's see if we can kind of get together and know that. And that is what networking really is. Networking is really past a social party where you just want to get with people, especially in today's time and with businesses doing work today. So it may have been before socializing, you know what I mean? The ballroom kind of thing. But today, when you're talking about networking, you're talking about collaborations, you're talking about projects, you're talking about things that's going to either build you, move you forward, or you're coming into something that's going to be a great outcome for you and the person that you're collaborating with. So when you network, you got to bring something to the table. I can't come to network because I'm handsome. I can't come to network because I didn't pass law school. I didn't pass law school. What are you doing now? Can you articulate what you want to bring to the table? And this is something that I really learned. And not that I say I couldn't have conversations or couldn't be social. I couldn't carry on direct opportunities for me to talk about things. But when you're in business, you're on people's time and their time is money. So if you don't have the capabilities of articulating, say, yo, this is what I bring. This is what I can do. This is what I can do for you. This is how we grow. Man, I've learned how to do that. And you learn how to do that going outside your circle. Because people around me for years were saying, yo, man, you sound good. You sound good. Yeah. Well, I wasn't not, even, not even that that you're learning it because you're outside the circle, but there are people who are teaching you. Because, you know, yes. if yeah. you if you don't know any better, how do, how right. do you true. know what to do differently? True. That is true. Because you don't know. And, you, and you're continuously in that cycle of, okay, I think I'm doing okay. Uh, you having people that's not really pushing you to your limits it, 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 you know those kind of things you're not having people engaging you past first base that's really the, the the title that i give it you can go past first base a lot of times we can make that okay i like okay i love okay that was great post inspirational inspiring mm-hmm. i mean those to me is first base but what has happened since that point what does that person have that can help you elevate yourself or what is it that you bring to them that can push them to a level that they haven't been and that to me is true network because it is exactly. just that you net you netting your work, so you putting it together. You saying, okay, what can come of this? Yeah, and Martin over here dropping a lot of intel and and Martin good conversation. He is dropping the bombs. Come on, okay, sir. Um, because it's true, you have to be aware of what is the value you're bringing to other people. Like yeah. what's what's really going on? Because the last thing you want to do is be someone who's always taking. Oh, and you're not yeah. able to give and you're not able to give to someone. It doesn't have to be the person who's giving to you, but you should be able to um, give to someone else. Yeah, you should be able to add value. And when I say that, because that, that, that term is thrown around uh, really on LinkedIn or other platforms. I know more so on LinkedIn because that's really where I do a lot of my business and work. Uh, value is a term that is thrown around tremendously. It reminds me when I first started it's everybody talk about authentic. It's a term that has taken on this meaning and it has to be such a great thing. But do you know if you know something and someone else doesn't know it, that's your value? Doesn't matter what it is. It's not a great thing that you have to have. It is something that is yours, that you fine tune and that you can offer to someone who has no idea about it. So when you look upon that, I, I thought about that when I came into coaching and consulting. I was like, oh, my God. I did a trending search. It's like 340 something million coaches. Like, and I'm saying, okay, well, I'm gonna make it 340, whatever that number was, right? So I was said, okay, well, alone? Be- <laughs> Is that standalone? alone? I was like, yeah, how am I gonna be the standalone, right? So I started to say, okay, well, what is really great about you? What is really that brings it to the table that's gonna say, oh yo, that's why my, my title and what I say, my my slogan. 
a different consultant for a different time because we're so used to consultants just being that okay you're a business dude you know this you're a life duty you know this or you're you're a guru in the fitness you know that and we putting them in those categories i say how about vulnerable what can you do with that that is you you bring that to every level that you're on and i said that's the niche right there because that's who i am and that right. would make my coaching stand out so now i'm not just one of the 342 million i am in number but i am offering greater things than those other 341 because i'm one that's offering something that you haven't dealt with don't even tell me you have i know i did the homework right martin martin said and me yes, martin, we add you to that that should, well. be, that should be the tagline <laughs> i like that one i like that right 347 because, uh, and i felt the same way you know um you always hear oh i could do a website i could i could put a website up in two seconds i could put up mm -hmm. And 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 I realized my value isn't just throwing up something random. My value my value has always been setting setting people down and understanding what is the purpose of this. Because at the end of the day, everything you're supposed to do in your life should have a purpose. Either you're having fun, you're just BSing, whatever it is, but you had a purpose. You're doing it for a reason. Um, and it's the same thing in your business. So whenever we're putting together. Um, tools we're gathering what should we use it's always about why do you need it not because someone told you you need it but you specifically what are you going to do with it just like when we're gathering up all this information in in the world we're, we're learning all these stats we're learning all these um we're reading all these books what are you going to do with all that information just let it rot so it's unless you understand why you're using the inform why you're collecting the information, how are you going to use the information, then it really serves you no value, no purpose. It's a really understanding what is the reason for you to really go and check these things out. What's yeah. up, Bernie? Yeah, they talk about that. Hey, Bernie, thanks for talking. Uh, Martin has said something that is great that I, I also use as a uh, Martin. Maybe we we more in line than I thought. People need what you bring, and mm -hmm. and that's and I say that all the time, and that goes along with that value. Um, when you're looking at that and you're thinking about that, yeah. And I was definitely want to say, oh, website, well, like, man, you gotta be kidding me. I can make one. I know we've talked about this many times, and this is nine ninety free. Yeah, website. it's yeah, it's the core of it. I was like doing one of commercial. I think it's commercial, and they got the, the little tax commercial. They say free, 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 free. I was looking up all of those kind of things because I just knew in my mind that websites can't be that hard. And that's the misjudgment that we take upon each and every genre of business that goes on. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is. I know people who say that I was a GM at Chick-fil-A for a few years. And people used to always say, oh, man, it's easy being managed. You got money coming out the street. I was like, do you know how hard it is to manage not only people, but to manage production and to manage Chick-fil-A business? We're talking about a $13, $14 million a year store. So it goes more into, you know, what you really have to do. Than the basis of what it looks like on the outside when i started my website you know i didn't told you guys pictures was a thing for me if it was pretty i thought it worked those sure things are, yeah those things are not those <laughs> things are not the case that she does remind me that every time i look at my new website which is so beautifully put together now by mm -hmm. uh miss uh brooklyn custom designs you guys go check it out carl shot free plug because it's put together with the purpose <laughs> It is a perfect, and that's something I wanted to get back to. I'm glad you you reeled me in back on that because a lot of times we do things and we are thinking about it for our own self. Someone first told me when I started saying a lot of things about my business that I didn't like that, and they went all in on me, and I was like, "Yo, yo, what are you talking about?" It's like that is not for you. Like, and a lot of times we build these businesses, we build and we pour all this into it based upon what we like, based upon how we think it should look based upon how I think it should function. But when I start looking at it and start listening, uh, real talk listening to other people, you know, directing the traffic to sort of speak, uh, I was like, oh, you're right. You're right. That don't have nothing to do with me. Like mm -hmm. effectively, that don't have nothing to do with Carl. Take that out and take those out. And then your projects will be just that. They'll be so much greater. They'll yeah. be so much in line with who you want to serve rather than who you're trying to be because it'll show you, you know what I mean? I'm like, just like going back to are you trusting the wrong people yes. so it, it's also about understanding what you need from people so if you coming and and you're saying okay you know what i want to start a business i need a coach because that that's always a, a a thing you you should invest 
in a coach or someone who can help you get the structure and an understanding on what you need to really do in the business to get you to the next level. Because we're all in business to make money. Your business should be generating some type of fund to keep you running and then keep itself running because the last thing you want to keep doing is relying on your personal funds to drive your business. So we go back to the point of you're in business to make money. So as you're doing this, how are you going to do that? How are you going to take your purpose in your life and the purpose can be helping children, helping women, helping men, helping animals, whatever that purpose is, you want to give back to the world. But how are you going to be able to fund that dream, purpose, whatever? So now you have to trust the person that you're calling your coach to sit there and be someone who is not going to in interject their personal beliefs into what you're doing. However, they're going to actually, without any... Um, reservation and with pure honesty but respect they're going to look at what you're doing look at what your purpose is and look at what your goal is and they're going to help you align the two so you can not only create a found, uh, a foundation to build on but you're actually allowing yourself to build a business that can that can be sustainable so when you find the coach you have to understand what is that coach's strength. Maybe you have a coach, but their strength is not helping you build a business strategy. Their strength is to help you with the mindset. So if you're if you're if your coach is there for mindset, then you got the wrong coach if you're trying to build a business strategy. Right? So a lot of times we are just in a wrong pool. We don't realize it because we're not asking enough questions. We're not reaching enough uh, reaching out to enough people. We're not expanding our reach. So all of that comes back to, are you networking properly? Are you networking with intention? If you know you need a coach to build a business strategy, then you need to start asking your network, hey, do you know someone who's a coach who does that? Specifically, not just a business coach, not a random coach. You don't need a personal coach. You don't need a dating coach. You need a coach who's going to help you build your business. So it's all about understanding who do you need in your circle and asking specifically for that person to be added to your circle and you can't and you can't know that you can't know that i know we had talked about it earlier and i had and, and i'm sure if you've been on linkedin you've seen her you not only just on linkedin but um i was beginning to work with uh ellie red cloud and her her digital her digital masters man she's she's a beast on on that marketing and uh we used to do sessions uh once a week and I used to just send her stuff because, you know, I'm the writer and an innovator idea guy. I used to just send her stuff. And, and she was like, well, what's really your purpose? And I said, I, I said, I'll send you some stuff so you can see what I'm talking about. Right. Because sometimes you have to really understand your purpose because I got into this alignment and not just me. And even now with the ones I coach and train now, I'm so precise with that, that I'm carrying that on for others to also get that because you have to you get into that. Oh, man, I just want to help the world right mm -hmm. like you know you you got these talents you got these gifts you have this 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 career path that you've taken that you know you're good in that you're exceptional in that you've got an expertise in and you just figure you can just blanket the world with that not the same thing so you mm -hmm. have to get down until you hear people all the time talk about these niece and these but you don't know your niece until someone drives it out of you because a lot of times when you're thinking of things on your level you're just thinking of a total big picture but the world don't work in a big picture like uh, Charlene says, there's your steps. I was thinking about being a business coach. I say a business coach. Okay, if you got the term business in front of coach, uh, I'm thinking or you're thinking that this person is aligned with you, but they're not purpose driven. They may have the things that in one area, but you're suffering in so many other areas that what they've given you not going to even work. So you mm -hmm. have to be and you have to ask those questions. I really, really found that out to be uh so true you have to ask those questions you have to be able to delve into it's almost being an investigator and me being on the terms of being an attorney you have to ask those questions because you want to seek those answers and get the people who can answer those questions when you're thinking about the websites and you think and, and charlene does a great job with the strategy oh man you guys i know martin i saw you down there martin you're talking about you want to build the best yeah, I saw ever. Martin. martin i'm gonna tell you right now bro from experience Get your pen and pad out, bro, because she got a notebook of questions. 
And if you don't have the answers, you're gonna be up the creek without a paddle. So I'm gonna tell you now, when you get but what is what it done for me and what is really really zoned down in a true funnel, not these creative funnels. So we like to say, okay, put people in a true funnel of actual people that can be actual clients that you can actually work and transform is the questions that she asked me to make an answer. And once I answered those questions, not only did it become plain for her to see what the design, it became plain for me to understand who I can help. And those are the kind of things that I think in business sometimes we don't, and it's not like we business dummies. We don't have all the answers, but mm-hmm. you got to believe we're not Macy's. We're not, we're not Bloomingdale's. We're not these structured companies who've been around for long periods of time that have all of these resources. We are solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, low level preneurs that, you know, we really need to take advantage of things when they're given to us. But we need to stop comparing ourselves to companies who are, what, how many decades in the game and realize that they too started at the bottom. Right. They started in a, in a position where they were where they are now. Yes, William H. Macy, for y'all who don't know, he started selling shoes out his uh, garage, I think it was, if I remember the story. So he didn't have a store. He, his garage was a store. Where Everybody, was- and, and, and let's just be, let's just keep it all the way 100. Most of these multi quadrillionaires, all, all their stories start in, a, in somebody's garage. Yeah, food, garage. Food, man, he sold out his truck. He sold out the truck in his car, right? His, the cars, uh, his garages. Day, day and I'm like, well, I, I'm like, that's a cute story, but that a garage will not be in my bio. <laughs> Yo, hey, it can be once you get established, though, then it takes away, it, it really puts in the semblance of you can start anywhere. I think that's really the point yes. behind it. When Draymond, I think Damon, uh, the FUBU guy, uh, when he talked about his story of how he sold his clothes out of the trunk of his car. I mean, yeah. you know, Jay-Z started selling his mixtapes out the trunk. Is, I mean, that gives you, I mean, it's awesome. It's nice to hear. It's catchy. But this also gives me the idea that, hey, I could do it from anywhere. I could start it from anywhere. But it's not just the start. It's about the resilience and, uh, and yes. knowing that you're going to keep pushing forward. Because when you get when you get doors slammed in your face, people mm-hmm. laughing at your dreams, people laughing at you dead to your face. <laughs> you're like, uh, OK. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you're not making sales you're not doing anything your business feels like it is just struggling it's stuck it's not going anywhere or you're in a corporate career mm. or let's let's just say cuz most times wow. we're not even saying career anymore we're just saying corporate job yeah uh, because there's no path anywhere there's there's a path to the end of the door like okay um so when you're doing stuff like that you really need to start understanding okay, okay how are you how are you going to push through those tough times? What uh, is that purpose that got you started? Is that strong enough to keep you going? Is that strong enough so you can now become the next FUBU creator? Or is it going to be strong enough that you will be the next Jay-Z in your career or your industry or whatever that may look like for you? Are you, are you, do you have enough of that heart, that drive to keep pushing forward through all the thousands of notes you're going to hear through the empty messages that you're going to receive <laughs> when you send out your email, your email list is a thousand and you might have gotten two opens. How are you going to keep pushing forward to say, oh, OK, this is me. I know. I know those two that open. Those are my people. Like, <laughs> you know, like w- w- what is going to really be that purpose to keep you pushing forward? And it's it's like I said, it's still depending on. Once you understand that, once you can really connect and understand that, that becomes your story. Most people don't realize that. Your brand story, they hear it all the time. What's your message? What's your story? Your story really comes from your purpose. Why did you start this? What what made you feel like, oh, I have to start a business? Because you could have done anything. You could have done a charity. You could have kept, kept it as a hobby. But you said, nope, I want to go legit. I want to I want to go file for my EIN number. I'm going to yes. go look for some some grants. <laughs> yes. What was the purpose of that? And then once you understand, OK, you know what? This is legit. I'm going to stick to this. I, I, I have to I have to keep going. I can't give up now kind of situation. That's how you always have it in the back of your mind. I ain't going to fail. I can't yeah. fail today or I, I'll fail, but I have to keep going. I have to get up again or, you know, let me let me cry for two seconds and then I, I'm going to keep it moving. Because sometimes that happens. Tears happens in business. Oh, man. Yeah, they happen. Yeah. <laughs> happens in business. Yeah. Um, 
it's it's just you know what when if you have that they say purpose driven life then you really understand you don't care who has a party you don't care who's doing what if you know that you have something that needs to get done in order for you to get to the next level then you have to push everything else aside and not because you don't want to be there but you need to get shit done you need to push it to the side and focus on what your next goal is going to be but you have to be driven you hear so many and you hear a lot of these terms um uh i wouldn't even necessarily say catchphrases or cliches but that's what they in turn turn out to be but they're so very true we hear people saying your why uh, you definitely got to get an understanding of what that why is. It's not just a kid per se. Oh, I'm doing this because this is my why. But well, you have to define that why. And that why, a lot of times you see people talk about you. People talk about, I'm doing it for my family. <clears throat> I'm doing it for, when I decided to do this business, my family was not in the play. I, I'll just be honest and real with you. I didn't say I was going to start this business for my family. I came to the aspect of saying I have something to offer to people. And this is what is going to be driven. So I have to find those people that want what I need. I mean, that want what I have so I can deliver them. Now, does a family play a part in it? Yes. But a lot of people get hung up. And I won't say this in a bad way. I just say this in a way that I, I, the street that I've traveled, the journey I've traveled on, family has already taken up. They're not taken up, but they've already taken that place of where they're going to be a why. They're, mm-hmm. they're an extension of me because they're already the why. They're my family. They're right. who I've said that I'm going to take care of. And who I'm going to do things for. So that is an automatic to me. I didn't think of it that way. I thought of my why. I said, okay, well, why you really want to take this from doing this and training and and, and coaching and, and 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 presenting and doing all of this and speaking uh, to corporate? Why did you want to take this to the level where you can say this is Carl's? And I wanted to because I wanted to define my message where I thought corporate was not taking advantage of it. And in the essence of where I thought that I can do that was me personally being able to put that out. Now, what that entails, it takes a hard work. It, it took me like two years now for me to even look on platforms and I see vulnerability in a session and no one is dogging nobody out about it. Nobody is saying, yo, dude, what is you talking about? So you can imagine how I felt a couple of years ago when I first did my vulnerability post and it got two comments and one like. But I didn't stop that. There was a pers- there was a perseverance and there was a driven there. And that was the why, because I wanted to make a change in how processes and perspective was. So, yes, the family was included because I want them to reap the benefits of the harvest. But I also had an intentional why. And sometimes you have to define that because we can hide behind, well, what's your why? I'm doing it to take care of my family. Yo, if you said I do to somebody, you owe them. If you had a child, you owe them. Mm. So they're already that why. <laughs> they should already be that why. But find out business-wise why you're doing what you're doing define that then that'll drive your purpose that'll drive your vision that'll drive your mission you know what i mean that's about as best as i can put it together you know that's right and and it's all and for me i've been fortunate to get into communities like um intentional success tribe uh growth academy now i'm in part of uh, growthpreneurs where i have you that's why i met you um yeah, it, it, sometimes it's like mm, hit or miss. <laughs> oh man, oh, I'm man. joking. I'm joking. Mm-hmm. But um, like that's what that's why a lot of times this show came about because I was not the person for video, uh, but Carl was good. He was like, oh, you know what? Let's do this. I, I was like, mm, okay. <laughs> but oh. like having having somebody really cheer you on, support yeah. you. Um, and uh, my accountability partner, Kale, he's, he's the same thing in growth Academy. We, we're making sure that, you know, you want to put something out, let's get it on paper. Let's figure it out. Let's flush it out. Um, and I had a, a nice chat with, um, Shara Charlson, um, and Eileen, and we were just really going di- deep into each other's, um, next product. What's the next idea you want to create? And we were like um, helping to tweak and say, well, that sounds cloudy. This sounds good. Update this. Um, so the same thing that you and I ends up doing, because we end up calling each other down there every day now. And it's mm-hmm. just to not just for the show purpose, but just to say, OK, what are you doing? What are you working on? What do you what is what's going on here? And, and it kind of keeps you accountable to make sure that you are actually keeping yourself moving and keeping your business growing rather than you being complacent. Cause we, we already know how that feels when you complacent yes. in life, 
you end up doing nothing. You end up being disgruntled. <laughs> and and God knows if you're going to end up on the ID channel or not. I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, I'm and we ain't talking about the real ID. IDs either. We talk We're like, about oh. the game. I was like, oh, that, that's what made you snap. Okay. <laughs> Duly noted. <laughs> so, I mean, just stuff like that. Just knowing that you have to understand what your purpose is, what your, what's your reasoning, and what do you need? And then you can start looking for the right people to trust your vision in. Because that's the last thing you want to do is put your vision in the possession of someone else who's not going to help you. Who's going to either take you because you there's a lot of things going on right now. People getting scammed left and right because you have people scrambling when when the pandemic hit that people were scrambling to start something. They needed to get online. They needed to do something. Yeah. Um, so the next of and, you know, the the those whenever there's something bad happening in the world, all these scams start popping up. People yeah. want to do quick money, all this nonsense. So you start to lose money fast trying to do dreams, um, big dreams quickly. Uh, so it's all about really understanding what's, what is it going to take? What do you have that stamina? Yeah. And you have to take, and you have to take a leap of faith also. I want to bring that in as well, because that plays a big part into you saying, I know when I was a big sports guy, I played basketball and football and our mantra was this, you can be prepared. Practice also prepares you and makes you the, the person to be able to perform at your job. But we saw, we also needed luck. We also needed the ball to bounce our way in order to win some games. It wasn't always about the preparation. So when you look at that as well, sometimes when you're feeling some kind of way about holding in your things and mm -hmm. not letting them out, or you're going to have to like give to somebody at some point in time for you to develop. A lot of stuff I'll be having, and I'll be like, oh, man. Sometimes I'll be like, yo, I hate to even run this by Charlene, but I know that I'm going to get the real in the answer. So a lot of things, even if I'm in my feelings about, you know what this was or i was passionate about this is my thing i didn't i didn't spend all this time on it and i throw it across and a lot of times it'd be that same thing she'd be like nah that's not really not and i'm like i have to take the deep breath right because i'm thinking like okay carl it's not about you it's not about you and sometimes you have to find someone that you could throw that off and that's in the essence of trusting sometimes you have to trust with a little bit sometimes you have to give someone a little bit of something of what you're doing to try to hear because sometimes they have an ear, they have a voice that you haven't heard in the essence of what you're doing. And that could cause you to change directions and pivot to a greater level. Because a lot of times we hear stuff all the time and our processes are how we process. A lot of times we hear good stuff. And I mean, I know from being a parent and telling the kids something, a lot of times I had my kids come tell me stuff that I told them years ago. And yeah. a buddy or their buddy's parent or someone in their cycle has regurgitated what I've said. Yo, like, yo, dad, man, yes, it's like, yo, that dad, such and such, tell me. And I just stand there with, like, I stand there with the gas face, like, you got to be kidding me, dude. I told you that four years ago, and it's mm -hmm. not at that point where you know that that ear to hear sometimes is not always with those same ones in your network. That yeah. ear to hear sometimes to be that foreign person who's saying. Uh, and when I mention foreign, I just mean out the network. It just means that person who hasn't been in your game, who don't know what you're doing, who ain't playing your ball, to say, yo, that don't even sound right. Now, this coming from someone else, that's an ear you need to hear. That's what you need. So there you start. You can only trust people if you give out things. If I'm going to stand here and hold everything, I trust a closed hand. I can't put nothing in his hand. You know what I mean? So I got to open it every now and then. If I'm going to get a dollar, I got to open true. it up. So that's what we got to do to trust people. That's true. But look, we can go in. We can go in for yeah, a we, long time. We, go. you know Martin, how we gotta hook up, man. Martin, I like Martin. I like Martin. We gotta get Martin on the show, Martin. Whenever you got Martin, time, no, man, drop the links for Martin. So Martin, yeah, we gonna out. drop. We gonna drop it for you, Martin. Together, yes. <laughs> be like, Martin is like he's giving us a, he's giving us some good things and some good yes. stuff to talk about and giving us that that conversation piece where. Uh, you know, you need you need to bounce things off of people. Yeah, too many times. I can do that too with the T O O and the number two. I can add both of them in there because it has and that's, that. that's a fact right there. Especially when they man, I could I can go in. And then me. they come to you like you never said it. Or, or no, like no, what what used what, what used to what used to get me? What used to get me right? Because Miss Thing used to be on a, on ABC when they would hear the same thing coming out of Oprah's mouth. And they're like, oh, oh my God. Oprah said this. 
And open. I'm like, hold up. Hold I told up. you that. Hold up. Hold up. Wait a minute. Do you have do you have us on? Because I hear I hear I hear the audio, my friend. Yeah, no, I don't have us on. Don't don't make me come for you. Uh, <laughs> you know what that is. That's shadow. A shout out. Um, I told you. I told you he'd show up. Him. He out there minding his business, sleeping. Don't even bring him into this nonsense. <laughs> uh, I'm about to drop this link for uh, Martin. So yes, you know, but it know. it it really it really becomes. Are you ready to to let people? Because a, a good friend and my mentor, Peter Sean, used to always say, sometimes you got to leave him at the foot of the cross oh, and wow. keep it moving. <laughs> I like that one. Though. I like that one. I'm I, proud of that. I always keep it in the back of my mind. There's just that as a post. You just got to leave the foot across. You can't bring everybody where you going. And the last thing you want to do is drag people over mm -hmm. the finish line because I'm not here for that. My back not built for that. Just plain and simple. Yeah, and I'm not doing it. And it's and not you, a necessity. You just want to have those people with you that want to go. They want to experience that. They want to go on that journey that want to feel what you're feeling. And that's the essence of why you're sharing because you want someone else to get those highlights of what you've done, what you've accomplished, what you've been through. You want to carry them on a journey. I don't want to carry nobody on a journey. I think the Bible tell you most, how can two walk together except they agree? So if you ain't a walker with me, you're not agreeing with me, brother. It's nothing that we got in common. And so it's, it's no need for me to kind of pull you my direction because I'm exerting too much energy. Now, if you're walking with me, if you get tired, I can bring you because you're coming with me. There you go. You going the other direction, homie. See ya. There you go. Like, I, I don't need drag marks behind me. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need drag marks behind me. No, no. You see my wrist? You see my wrist? Like, I, no. I got work to do. I can't do I, all that. No, I, 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 I can't fool with that. Somebody put <laughs> foot of the cross. I feel yes, you on that. Yes. I feel, you on that, I feel you like that's pretty strong because right now we fit. We, I'm seeing a LinkedIn user. I know she likes to be incognito sometimes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! But yes, foot of the cross. That's where you leave I'm them. I'm digging that. That's I'm digging. And I'm digging that. The day, it's facts. It's facts because yeah. you you don't want to you don't want people on your journey who are gonna be um like and and, and this is this is what I'll, I'll go back to. I'm gonna go back to uh, a movie, uh, Ten Commandments. Oh, that's my favorite show right there. That's and and now you re you remember because uh, I'm not gonna get their names right. Sorry, I don't, I don't, I don't breathe the Bible. Yeah, we still work, we still working on the church though. God is able. God whatever, is able. <laughs> whatever. My Jesus flip tables. I say it all the time. However, let's go back to the Ten Commandments movie, and I will never forget the little old man who had the the young girl. She didn't want to be with him. She wanted to be with Joshua, but he was like, "Nope, you mine." And he he was like, "You know, since y'all want to be together, they kicked his ass out, right?" So he had to go and travel, <laughs> and he didn't want to be there. He wanted to go back. Yeah, and he wanted to go back to Egypt. Yeah. Where he was, he wanted to be feeling like he on top of the world. So homeboy was on the journey with them, and he's throwing salt in the game. He's the whole trip, Matt. He telling them to go get some um gold. They need they need to go put together a cow Golden and calf. Yeah. So he's sitting here jacking up the whole journey. Mm -hmm. Where was he supposed to be? At the bottom of the cross, at the yeah. foot of that bad boy. Let leave him where he was. That's they what he up. they open up. They that God opened up the earth on them. So yeah, you, you don't know. want people like that on your journey. No. Always ready to tell you um, the the errors and oh this is bad and this is wrong. They are always ready to point out the negative in your journey rather than taking that as a actual um, lesson for you to learn and grow and move forward. They taking that as, oh, well, we need to stop. <laughs> we need to turn back. No, yeah. no. Because you're going to have those people that are just satisfied in complacency. And that and that's what it is. You're going to have, you're going to run across those people that have got to a level and that they're okay with that. But the thing about that is I'm fine. Stay at your level. But those that are at that level, if you be and in corporate is a, is a fester, a cesspool of them that have gotten complacent with these positions and these titles and of them, they are veiling so much of negativity that you don't really want to aspire to be to those levels because they haven't projected anything that makes you 
want to be like that. And such is what we do in business. We want to project that and we want to emulate those attitudes and those uh, those experiences that people want to repeat, that people want to come back, that people want to search you out. You don't want the, uh, that Nathan was his name. You don't want Nathan coming and chilling with you, yes, bringing yes. you out. Nathan, Nathan was crying the whole trip. But you have, people, <laughs> yeah, you have people like that. You have people that just want to come. They just want to roll with you because they're looking yeah. good. They want to yeah. roll with you because you're not where they are. And then you yeah. can bring them along. They want to roll with you because the ride is free. It's a free yeah. ticket. They, but they all the time, they, they, I think what the OJ said, all the time they want to take your place. The backstop. Nathan yeah. wants to take the place, but he didn't have what it took to take the place. Because even, even when Pharaoh came through with the chariots, he was like, oh, they coming. We can yeah. go home. Yeah, he studied. He's like, study Moses trying to drown us. And God said, no, we're going to park this right here. Come, this on through. come on, come on, walk through. I got yeah. you. I got you. He's like, what? Yeah. What? So you always have to make sure whoever is on your journey yeah. has yeah. your back and is ready to do the work. Because if they're not ready to do the work with you, you need to leave them behind. Plain and simple. Plain and and simple. the back don't necessarily mean they're your cheering squad. There you go. Yeah. So thank you, Martin. Thing. Yes, I saw it was Peter Sean. That's my mentor. For those who who don't know, Miss Thing right here, Peter Sean. <laughs> Peter Sean says she must carry one thirty nine and your one thirty nine, or worse, your two fifty. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. That's that's back breaking right there when you. Yes. And, it and Peter, so much for you. And Peter Sean is uh formerly military so when when she oh, does things and she no. make moves i pay attention i listen i ask her questions right because i know if she's telling me something she did her research and then she'll tell me go read here for yourself so she doesn't just tell me stuff and i'm supposed to take it take her word for it she's she's like go go over here but she's also the one who's taught me that in my own business as i'm doing design and stuff like that to really understand and get to know not only what the client is doing, but how can we elevate together? Because it's not always about the money, yeah. but if the client isn't ready, then why are we dragging them someplace? You know what I mean? Like why fight them? Yeah, and it's definitely true. Get, give on, uh, thank you for your service as well from one military to another. I appreciate your service, uh, Peter Sean. I know you had a military mind. I don't know what it is. I think, I think Charlene just like that military hardness. You know what I mean? She can't help herself with that. With that Look, y'all are well. drawing to me. Let's not get that twisted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. See, some, some people like some, some people got to humble themselves on the mighty hand. You know, it, it's going to take some. It's going to take some. Well, yeah, what when you, you talk. I am humble. I am. I got humble. you. I got don't come for me. Don't come for me. When we get off this live, when we get off this live, I got my homie back here. I got my homie back here. Yeah, he did. I, I already told you. I already told you what he does. Flip. He, he doing over. He, yeah, he did shake over some tables. Like he can't. He can't deny that. But when we're looking at these people that we're having in these, the ones that we're inviting into our circles, I mean, you definitely, you definitely have to do your vetting. You definitely have to do your. Uh, but don't be afraid to take chances. Mm -hmm. Like that is a real. That is the real success story to an entrepreneur, a yes. business owner. You've taken a chance. And if you're taking this chance, ride it out, ride it out, ride it out with your purpose, ride it out with your dedication, ride it out with your vision, ride it out with the mission that you're on, ride it out with the people that you want to help. I mean, ride it out because you've taken that journey. Like uh, Charlene said earlier, you could have just like stayed with that expertise. And I've ran into some people in my circle 20, 30, 30, 40 years, Ooh. you know what I mean? Doing what they're doing. So they are good at what they were doing. But what they've decided is they're going to come out of that 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 circus and come and pull on there what they have to offer uh, to other people. And I think that is so key that we really have to understand what we're bringing is value. If you know how, if you know how to tie your shoe from the left side and you right handed, everybody don't know how to do that. So you got value. I mean, I'm just using it simplistically, but I mean, you have value. So once you realize the value you have, dig into that value and get some help with bringing it out. Cause I definitely, I definitely in my, get you a coach, get you, if you can't afford or whatever, get with a lot of these coaches are giving out freebies. 
not not trying to just sell what they're doing but a lot of people understand the times we're in the circumstances we're in what's befalling us with the pandemic what our resources look like so a lot of people is not trying to break banks with you to get you where you need to be a lot of people are really want to help you and you have these communities such as growth academy such as intentional uh the intentional consulting those kind of places like that that really that will help you to be able to just start your things until you're at a place where you can get that professional you can get that but don't give up the journey don't give mm -hmm. up the journey you know how many entrepreneurs have failed you know what i mean got tired but you need to stay the course and, and we're here every tuesday and thursday to continue to get you tips continue to feed you what we learn we pass that's yeah. how i've always been from from my day first in school i think my first test i knew one plus one and the kid behind me didn't know so i passed it on from that point in time i've been passing so knowledge to me knowledge gain is knowledge that i'm going to share so we're going to share that charlene feels the same way and that's why we came up with this show because we said people need to know on the real talk not that you know not that nonsense the way we always hear it but the real talk that's what we're yeah. talking about because it's not it's not about fluff it's not about Ooh. um keeping you blind it's about that's keeping true. us moving forward um sometimes we don't like to hear what we have to say <laughs> or right. or what's being said to us <laughs> right sometimes but, you don't like to hear it Sometimes it's needed. It's necessary. We need to really, if you want to take the business seriously, yes. you want to really, because a lot of people want to be, want to be Amazon. You can't be Amazon because Amazon has done some grimy crap. <laughs> Do you have the stomach to be Amazon? That's, That's what I'm saying. Are, are you that person? Are you that person from garage to grimy? Like, are you that person? G to G, from G to G. <laughs> So, Carl, tell the folks where they can find you. Yo, we, we've had a ball today. I, I just love these sessions where we can just rock on. This, this connection is real. This connection is true. Me and Charlene, we have a lot of fun, y'all. We talk about a whole lot of things that we always leveling up. We kind of like leveling up, and, and we push each other so much that I'm reading more stuff to level up. So I know she can come back with more stuff to tell me that ain't enough to level up. So we go back <laughs> we go back and forth. And it's a fun thing and it's a growing thing. And it's something that's really appreciative. I'm appreciative of it because the relationship has really just pushed me to the level of saying, yo, this is not enough. You got to go further. So you guys come and check me out. Check out this beautiful website she designed, CarlShawnWalkins.com. Uh, let her uh, come and check it out. Look at the services that's being offered. Also, I have a um my course is coming out looking for me to drop that the vulnerability toolbox i have given it a name i was contemplating some names for a while but i have given it a name and it's the vulnerability toolbox and uh some things i'm going to offer i got this course part that uh i'm giving out that is going to be i'm trying to see if i'm put it in my free because it went well i did a, a showing of this at uh wells fargo give a shout out to them uh, that I did for their VPs, and it was an effect of personal vulnerability. Well, so it's gonna I, get temporary freebie, temporary. Uh, yeah, temporary freebie. I'm gonna be getting. Thank you for putting me in. That's my cash. It's a time. trial. It's a trial. Yeah, it, it's a <laughs> trial that I'm gonna be that I use with them, and I use at a work at a workshop that I did with uh, some VPs and some executives at uh, Wells Fargo, and it turned out really well. It was something that I was trying to. It was a beta, uh, though I knew the information and all of that, but it was how I put it together. And mm -hmm. I said, yo, that's going to be an effective tool for every leader, every individual, because it's going to tap with you. It's not just a corporate thing. It's just it's a business owner thing. It's a person thing. And it's going to elevate you to deal with the vulnerabilities you have so you can take that person to the next place and be exceptional in what you decide to do. So those are some of the things that I got uh, working uh, out. They got the ebook that's coming out to vulnerability. Uh, so it's it's. Man, is it so much going on? It's so much going on, but we're definitely going to be in touch. I also got a few things in the making. I'm trying to do a vulnerability workshop. You guys keep your ears open for that. I'm looking to join with Miss Deanna Jean. Uh, yes, yeah, she's doing the VIP. Charlene's going to spread that news, but we're going to be doing a vulnerability workshop with some masterminds beside myself, and we're going to be talking about that too. Coming up soon. So stay tuned on Real Talk. You don't turn that knob. Don't touch that knob. You know how they sell them on the TV show. Don't turn that channel. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, the VIP day, Intentional Success VIP day with Deanna Jean. We, we're going to drop a lot of these links in the, the actual comments so you can have those. Uh, that's going to be a four-figure day. Folks have already been uh, 
investing in themselves, investing mm -hmm. in this day, because what we're going to do is we're walking away with the tribe. We're walking away with the actual success tribe, a tribe who's going to help us take action, keep us accountable. Mm -hmm. And if we need to tap on them and we say, hey, Carl got a... <laughs> Carl's got a session coming. We need him to fill this room. They yeah. are going to be able to start taking action and helping Carl fill that room. So that's what that day is about. The VIP uh, Intentional Success Day. It's all about making sure that not only are we building our tribe, we're going to be taking action right then and there in the room together. So that's a whole slew of women because this is going to be Women's Day. Carl's going to have men's day later. This is going to be women's day where we taking action. We're going to be on all of our social media. We're going to be on our LinkedIn. So trust when you start seeing folks hitting you up, <laughs> they're at yeah. VIP day. That's happening this Saturday. It's a four figure day. All of us are sitting there and we are making sure that we are building success tribes, not just random tribes, not just tribes that say hello, not tribes who drop um, selfies all day. We are actually taking action to make sure our mm -hmm. lives are being improved yes. and everybody around us is coming up with us. Um, so that's that's definitely happening. And to get people ready for that, to get people ready for the fourth quarter, because damn, 2022 is coming. It's, it's at the door. It's like, hello. Um, but to get people ready, I am doing strategy sessions. And that means your brand, your website. We're going to make sure that it's aligned with your business because so many people are starting websites. They want to be online, but they don't know what their purpose is. They're not putting together an actual plan and they don't know how to put people through a funnel. They don't even know what a funnel is. So that's what that whole day is about. It's a 90 minute session. For 397, we are going to make sure that you are leveled up properly and you are ready for 2022. Because when 2022 comes, there's no more excuses that you don't know how to do something. There's no more excuses that you don't know how to look for people. There's no more excuses that you don't know how to ask questions and ask people for help the right way. All of that's about to be out the window. So get yourself ready. Get yourself prepared. This is about to be a whole different ball game. So why not be part of it? Not, not a spectator, be an actual participant. So that's coming up. And of course, my podcast dropped. I dropped another episode today. Oh, okay. wow. um, <laughs> yeah. Transform clicks to profit. It is all over the different platforms. So please go to your favorite platform, download it, follow become somebody who is listening. And then of course, you know, leave me the feedback. I can't do better if I don't know feedback. So leave me feedback, leave me reviews. Five is five is nice. It's nice. <laughs> but you know, you know, I'm not pushing, but I'm gonna say it again. Five is nice. So <laughs> go to transform mm. click to profit. And it's not just about website. It's about everything from your strategy to your structure, to your technology, making sure that all of it is together. So yes, I'm dropping episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. So when you know we on live and leaked in, you better know the podcast has a new episode. And I can't wait to hear from you guys. I can't wait for you guys to listen. And we are going to also make Real Talk a podcast. So we're going to just get that ready for y'all. So we will have show notes. We will have a website. We will have all of that ready. We just want to make sure that we are not going to make that a stopgap. We're going to keep doing our lives. We're going to keep recording our lives. We're going to keep sharing and talking with you guys. And of course, if you want to be on the live, because it's all about making sure we are showcasing you all we are making sure you all connect with our community and you build your own communities through us if you want to be a part of that we are dropping the link as well we're going to make sure that you get that so you can book with us we want to make sure that we are showcasing you and we're talking Charlene. You. somebody rang my doorbell hold on oh no he this didn't is my ring his this doorbell. Is they're knocking on the door hold on Oh, low alive. You see, you see the kind of foolishness that's going on? This is this is why we work together. <laughs> As he loved Jesus to look over us. Okay, we're gonna work this out though. But I just wanted to make sure that you guys know that we are turning this into a actual podcast. We cannot wait. We love your support. Thank you for always coming. And like I said, you want to be a part of it? We're gonna drop that link so you can be a part of it. And I, too, have my own guests that I will be bringing on to my podcast. I can't wait for that. Oh, what's up, what's up? So, Mr. Polo hey. is back. 
Yes, I'm back, y'all. I don't know. Man. <laughs> Yo, FedEx, see, sometimes it's, it's a good thing when you work from home, and then it's a bad thing. FedEx came to the door, and it was FedEx a requiring business. Requiring me, signature. Why you like, talking to promote some folks who came through? Yeah, yeah, yeah promote some people. Promote some people. Yes. Look, guys, we're going we gonna to be like, it, it, it's going to be blowing up. We have so many things. And my boy Gideon, Gideon was the one getting me together with the video child because I was like, "What?" Yes, yes. And so, we still have. And, and I'm, I still have to order my my camera, so don't 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 be mad at me, Gideon. It's coming. <laughs> yes, we're gonna we're gonna get Martin on there. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna get Lisa on there. Lisa, thank you for chiming in. We're definitely gonna yes. get you on there. You guys also, I'm uh, redoing um, Carl Sean's Daily Word the podcast. That was my original outlet almost two years ago now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to go back and revisit that and rejoin that. Uh, Charlene's gave me some inspiration to kick that back out. We are going to Clubhouse. I'm just trying to think of all the things we're doing because we're doing, we're doing some major things that we're moving and shaking on. And we're going to be going into 2022, man, with some great aspirations and some great things already done. She's told you about the uh, websites we're going to get. Uh, we're also looking to in the near future some gear. So as guests, you're gonna be able to get gear, you're gonna be able to order gear from the website. Cause real talk, uh, we definitely working on that as well. It's just so much things that we got. The podcast is coming out. Clubhouse, we going to do. We have the room. We got to schedule a day. We add the additional day, Tuesday and Thursday. We got a special guest that's gonna be on Thursday. I have dropped the promo information. To Shakita Jackson, I am looking forward to her. I can't job. wait for her. Come on, yeah, now. she's excited as well. I just spoke with her this morning before we got on the show, so she's excited about that. Uh, we're just going to be kicking it live, and we're just going to be doing a lot of things, guys. We appreciate you guys. I just want that to definitely be reiterated. We cannot do this without you because you won't have anybody to show up. You can have a show with no people, and it soon will not be a show. But we thank you guys so much for your love, the support that you give. Continue to drop in. Tell us where you're coming from. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your partners, tell your neighbors, tell anyone that's on LinkedIn. We do it on Facebook. We do it on Insta, uh, not Instagram, I'm sorry. Uh, YouTube channel, mine scream to that. Charlene has her channels that they scream to. We also have the replay. So it's information that we can definitely get to you. If you have questions, please let us know because we want to We want to cover things that are vital and essential to you. Not to say with the show ain't going to go on if you don't, but what it does, it gets greater when we have your involvement. And those are the kind of things that we're looking forward to push. So with that being said, and I appreciate you guys for letting my doorbell interrupt the live. And like Lisa said, like what what, what Lisa say? Mm-hmm. That was hella country. That was hella country. <laughs> yeah, 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 I live. I live in Jersey. It is kind of country where I live. See, so, I told you, know, you he and a whole different world. Do. Hey, yo, when you get a package, I mean, I don't, it ain't like I'm worried about nobody stealing it from the city. But you know, we got wolves. We got deer. Because y'all bored out there. They ain't got nothing else to do but take your packages. Y'all bored. <laughs> no, we got the animals. So you have to watch the animals. Yo, deers come up on the deck and all that kind of stuff. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So we want to make sure. That we get those things in the house. What are going to do with a package? What are they going no, with? They don't know. They just tear it up. It's just, oh, something, okay. to <laughs> it's just something to bite. They don't care. They they tear it up if you sit it out there on the porch. Well, but technically, y'all taking away their habitat. So I think that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what they told me when I bought the house. It's like it used to be a deer patch in the back. It's like, yeah, right. Why y'all build it here then? You don't took Uncle Joe's home. They don't know what's going on. <laughs> Yo, yo, we continue though. We keep it real talk. We appreciate you guys, man. Really, yes. really, we do. We really do. Martin, we thank you. Yeah, yeah I'm still country, Lisa. You know what I mean? They, they can't take the boy out the country. You know what I mean? Take him out. But you can't. I'm still country. Absolutely. Proud of it. Proud of it. Proud of it. <laughs> thank you, everyone. So thank we you, are everybody. heading out. We we actually went over, what, eight minutes? Oh, yeah. Eight minutes. Oh, yeah. Not we're going to have to pay okay, over fine. That's right. And it was Lisa Fall. She got the last comment. Oh, no. Comment. See? Mm. Well, she can handle you when she get on the show. I'm going to leave that right where, where it is. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you, everyone. And again, we will see you on the next show. Appreciate y'all. See y'all Thursday, 10 o'clock. <laughs>